Now let's take a closer look at primitive or parametric objects, the objects that you're going to find right here. Now these objects are created from mathematical formulas using a number of preset values. So that means that primitives have no points or surfaces that you can manipulate. So let's take a look at what that means. So currently this cube is in its parametric state. It's created by mathematical formulas. And we can come in and we can change things like the length on different axes. We can also come over here to the Attribute Manager, click on the Object button, and we can make changes in the X, Y, and Z size parameters right here. We can also change the number of segments that make up the cube. So if we come over here and turn the display from Garage Shading to Garage Shading with Lines, you can see now that this is made up of segments. One, one, and one. If I change these numbers, let's say we change these to three, three, and three, you see how the number of segments has increased on the cube. Now again, we can't access this right now, but I'll show you how we can in just a moment. Something else that you can do here in the Attribute Manager, you can turn Fillet on. So if I do that, then I'm going to get a bevel around my edges. Let me get up here close to this. And I can control the radius of the fillet and the number of subdivisions that make up the fillet. Zoom in closer, you can see that. So the more subdivisions I have, the smoother the curve will be. So primitives are normally a great place to start, but there's only so much that we can do with primitives. So let me take this back to 2. So in many cases, what we do is get the primitive to the point that we want, and then we convert it to a polygonal object. And we do that by selecting it and then clicking this button right here. You can also click C on your keyboard. Now, if you'll notice, this is changed to a polygon object. If I come over here now and I click on my Live Selection tool and I click on my Polygon tool, I can come over here and have access to these individual pieces or individual polygons that make up this cube. So I can select one of these and then I can move that out. I can also come over here to the points and I have access to the individual points that make up this polygon. So typically this is how it works in modeling. You start with a polygonal object, you get it to a certain point, and then you convert it to a polygonal object where you have much more control, and you have control at its very base level. So I can come over here and grab my edges tool, and I can select individual edges, and I can manipulate those as well. So we'll get into this in much greater detail as we go along, but for right now, I just wanted you to be aware of it and know that it's there. So let me go ahead and delete this cube. Let's take a look at some of the other objects that we have. So here's a cone. And again, these are parametric or primitive objects at this point. I can't select my polygon tool and select anything on here because at this point, it's still a mathematical formula. Now, most of these objects have different attributes that you can change in the Attribute Manager. Some of them are all the same, like your basic and your coordinates. These are typically the same no matter what object it is. When you come to the Object tab, typically it's going to be something specific to the object that you have in your scene selected. So right now, I can control the top radius of my cone, the bottom radius, and I can control its height. You can control the segments. We can control whether it has caps or not. So right now, caps are turned on. We can turn the caps off. We can control the amount of segments that make up the cap. We can also control specifically just the top or the bottom to get our rounding in there. So you can come up with a lot of unique shapes just by adjusting the parameters that you're going to find in the Attribute Manager before you convert it to a polygon. We can control the slice on this. So if we turn Slice on, we can control how much of this object shows. And these are all animatable too. So you'll notice these little buttons right here. Anytime you see these little buttons, it means that these properties are animatable. Get rid of our cone. Let's take a look at the cylinder. Again, we have our basic and our coordinates. We go to the Object tab, Height and Radius. And our height. 
segments, caps, and slice again. Let's take a look at the disk object. We've got an inner radius, an outer radius, again segments, and we have slice again. Just be thinking about the different things that you could do with these, especially since they're animatable. Plane, polygon, sphere. Let's take a look at the sphere. So with the object, we can control the radius and the segments. And we can also control the type of sphere it is. So there's several different sphere types. And depending on what your project is, you may need any of these. Got a capsule. Again, control our radius, our height, segments, caps. You see, with the more subdivision that we have, the more curve we get in this area. Slice again. Tube. Inner radius. Outer radius. I think you're kind of getting the idea. You can turn on fillet. And we have a landscape object. This is great if you have to create landscapes, of course. See how that looks. By adjusting these numbers, we can get all sorts of variations. So just remember, the primitive objects or the parametric objects are incredibly powerful. And more often than not, this is the first place that you're going to start when you're modeling.